Hi, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. So I wanted to do something a little fun today and kind of catch up on how I did on my 2020 goals. So for this video, I'm going to be reacting to a video I posted in the beginning of the year called Top 20 Books to Read in 2020. And this is of course before everything literally hit the wall in 2020. And these were 20 backlisted titles that I wanted to try and get to this year. And you know, one would think if setting a goal like this that they would stick to it, write it down somewhere, something to track it and I didn't do that. I had a journal spread for it and then I never filled it out because I kind of just like gave up on reading journaling in 2020. Um, my reading journal kind of turned into a K-pop journal but I am starting off my 2021 reading bullet journal already and I'm so so excited to be doing that. But anyways, so um, the moral of the story is that I lost, I lost sight of these goals. So I think I will do this again this year, but maybe like shave it down to 10 because 21 is just a lot, especially because this year I only read 50 something books, which is I'm totally fine with. Um, even though in past years I have read a hundred, you know, like life is just different this year. So it is what it is. And thus I'm going to react to this video and I haven't watched it since I published it. So I don't even know if I remember the books on this list. So we'll, we'll see what I read, what I didn't read, take a tally at the end. But this is kind of just going to be me roasting myself and how I didn't meet my goals, even though I'm kind of like, it's a goal check-in, but like, did I really meet these goals? I don't know. But I just thought it could be like a fun little video idea, change things up a bit. Uh, some end of the year wrap ups, you know, all that stuff. So let's get into it. I have my computer here with all of its beautiful stickers. If you know where these are from, props to you. If you don't, well, like they're pretty anyways. So like, okay. So this video is definitely inspired in part by Nicole and her book's recent series where she does a TBR completion project where she reacts to the books the TBR is a chat in 2020 and tries to finish them off in the last two months of the year. Obviously, I'm not going to try and finish these, but hopefully this will like maybe guide some of my reading direction from the backlist titles that I do want to read in 2020. Um, so thank you, Nicole, because I have been really enjoying your series. I think it's so fun to kind of see the books that kind of got, you know, tossed to the wayside, kind of didn't grab your attention and then kind of forcing yourself to go back and read them. We'll see how I do with this, but this is more like a roast on myself. And let's start. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the top 20 books that I want to read in 2020. These are books that I kind of have not gotten to yet, that have all been released before 2020, and I really want to make an effort to make sure that I get to them this Did year. I make so an effort? I'm going to go in like no particular order, just go down my list in kind of the order that I thought about them. And to start off, we have The Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I mean, this is a book that I was heard and thinking what I need to think about. Okay. So I did read Skyward by Brandon Sanderson and then I read Starsight by Brandon Sanderson and I freaking loved it, gave it five stars. I thought it was such a cool book series. Like I just thought it was amazing. You know, like Spensa is like this girl that's trying to be a fighter pilot despite the whole society that she's living in on this like exo, not even an exo planet, but she's like this random planet in the middle of nowhere that they're trying to survive on. Like she's trying to be this fighter pilot despite everything and it just has such great characters and such really cool world building and I thought the sequel even up the ante even more. So I did read this one, so we're starting off strong. So this I think, I guess this was the first one that came to mind with the way that I structured this video. So um, I did get to that one. So I'm glad that we have at least one that I've read on this video. And I'm gonna skip over some parts of this video that like explain plot and stuff like that because you know, you can go read, you can go watch this video if you want, but like you don't need it twice, you know. And I've had it on TBRs a few times. And I, I have had it on TBRs a few times and I have never gotten to it. The next book on this list is The Last Magician by Lisa mm -hmm. Melissa, my best friend, got me these books. This one and the sequel for my birthday. And so I feel like I really need to read them. There's barely any magic in modern day New York. However, Sorry, Melissa. I did not read it. I saw them on my shelf, like right here. So I'll pull it off. I mean, this book does still really intrigue me. So yeah, sorry Melissa, um, I didn't read this one. I mean, just like, look at this, it's so stunning. The third one was supposed to come out in 2020 and it never did. So I feel like that kind of like stopped any 
any motivation that I have, but it is kind of like a very Diviners-esque series. And I remember the reason that Melissa got me this for my birthday is because we were in Barnes & Noble together, as we do when we hang out. And I was like looking at this cover, I was like, oh, this is a really cool cover. Like it has an Ouroboros on the front with like the snake swallowing its tail. And then she got me the first two in the series. So she also got me The Devil's Thief. I also watched Reagan from Peru's Project and she read this series and really loved it. And I really um, love watching Reagan for fantasy recommendations. So, like, I feel like I will love it when I read it. I just have it and like, I don't know, maybe I'll wait until the third one comes out and then binge all three, which I said I was gonna do with the Poppy War. I haven't gotten to it yet, but that's hopefully a 2021 reading plan. I don't know. This is kind of to just like guide myself in here going forward. I honestly had wine before filming this video to make the roasting process easier. On my list is Warcraft by Marie Lou, which this is just such a pretty book. Look at this blue with this. It is gorgeous. So much. Um, and this is a duology. Warcraft is a game that has been taken over. I did not read this one. Um, I feel like I don't have any excuse because I've owned this for a while. Because I used to see it all the times in Barnes and Noble when I was living. Oop with my parents and I would go to Barnes & Noble all the time because I was bored because I lived in the middle of nowhere, Florida and there's nothing to do but go to Barnes & Noble. Um, oh, I didn't mean to play this. And so yeah, I still have Warcross. I still have Warcross and I haven't read it. And um, maybe the next time the mood for a sci-fi strikes should be it. But like, it, I, I've honestly been in such a fantasy romance mindset lately that like sci-fi has not been crossing my radar. Is this like the whole video just gonna be me like making excuses for myself, roasting myself? Oh, I gotta get like on the roasting part of it, right? Um, this was a short book. I don't know why I didn't read it. I have no excuse. It's pretty, it's got rainbows, it's got a teal cover. This is everything that would attract me to a book, like a moth to a flame. And I didn't read it yet, so I suck. Maybe a year and a half ago. Still adapted. Ha, a year and a half ago. Okay, so now it's two and a half years ago that I purchased this book. I haven't read it. That's like pretty bad. I should read it. Okay, let's go into the next one. Next up is Ghost of the Shadow Market by Cassandra Clare, Terry Brennan, Maureen Johnson, Kelly Link, and Robin Wasserman. This is a short story collection following the silent brother, brother Zachariah, as he is in the illicit shadow market. Where okay, so I did read this one and I loved it. I love brother Zachariah and his character. And we got some cameos from characters that I truly adore, like Tessa. Um, the story of them in the 40s destroyed my soul. Destroyed it. Just like left it in shatters. And then it also um, had some stories that were important for the backstory of the characters in Chain of Gold. So I kind of did, like I had been slacking on my Cassandra Clare for a little bit and then I caught up on all of it before reading Chain of Gold. So I read Ghost of the Shadow Market, um, one that I think is next in this video, and then Chain of Gold. And I love doing it that way. I love Cassandra Clare. Like obviously I have a whole Shadowhunter shelf up there and like some more even like further down on my shelf because it doesn't all fit on one shelf. And... Oh, Shadowhunter's trash, so I am glad that I stuck to this one. Coming Lost Out before Chain of Gold comes out in March, and so I really, really want to get to this one soon so that I am prepared when the next Cassandra Clare book hits the show. I was prepared for Chain of Gold, and I am proud of myself for that. And on that note, the other book that I need to read in 2020 is Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu, which is the first book in The Eldest Curses. This follows Famine. Okay, so I did read this one right after Ghost of the Shadow Market and part of myself, again, I caught up. I did a little Cassandra Clare, little like sprint, if you shall. So I did read this one. I loved it. I thought that I was really happy that Cassandra Clare did this series and I did go to a signing of hers and she said that she took a pay cut to write this series as well because her publisher didn't think that like a series following a gay protagonist and their boyfriend would do as well and so they didn't want to pay her as much as I'm sure the premium that they're paying for Shadowhunters series and um Cassandra Clare was kind of like well fuck your homophobia I'm gonna write it anyways and I'm really proud of her for that and I think her Shadowhunters books are a lot of times overlooked for how well they do on representation because you have to think that the Mortal Instruments was published in 2012 when there was like barely any diversity, barely any representation. She had Alec, a gay character, and Magnus, a bisexual wizard. And I think that was a lot of people's first time encountering those kinds of characters. 
So yeah, I mean, and in her recent series, there is so, so much more diversity than in the Mortal Instruments. I honestly think the Mortal Instruments is the weakest of her series, but like it's a fun read and it's a read that should be read for the foundation of the rest of the books, but the other series kind of blow the Mortal Instruments out of the water. This has been a rant. Anyways, for It's Girls of Magic, she wrote it even though she had to take a pay cut for it and I appreciate her for that. And there was, oh, and on that note, the second one came out in that series. I haven't read it yet, but I'm probably gonna do like a Sandra Claire binge before the next Lo Lost Hours. Is that what it is? Lost Hours book. This is like so random, but my hair was so much shorter and it's gotten so longer because I only got it cut literally once this year. A classic, and that is Graceling by Kristen Kishore. Katza has had the ability to, to kill. I did not read this one. I acquired it at some point. Did I acquire it? I think I acquired it for Christmas last year. It's all by radar, but it's like on my like sub radar, you know, so it's not on my like, immediate radar. So I just like don't pay attention to those undercurrents. Things that are like on my shelf that I haven't read yet that I should. It's probably like more of the stuff that's like down towards the bottom, right? Because like all my faves are on my like viewable shelves, but like all the stuff down here, which yes, there's a net because my dog literally has destroyed some of my books. Oh yes, also I'm wearing pajama pants because who wears real pants when I saw my booktube videos? I don't know anyone. If you know someone that like actually puts on real pants while filming booktube videos, like send them my way because they need to not wear real pants when filming videos. I'm just saying this is much more comfortable. Anyways, so yeah, all my like, not as read books are like under the net. Um, one, because I haven't read them yet, and two, because I don't want my dog to eat them because he is a gremlin. So, I've gotten off, off topic again, but you know, this is like just kind of a roast video. So like, maybe I should just roast myself for being off topic, but I have a lot of thoughts in my brain and I just don't talk fast enough, even though I talk really fast to express them all, because I just have so many thoughts. A man with her bare head. Okay, but this this book does sound really cool. I just haven't. Ooh. Okay, I do want to read The Thief by, by Megan Another Dillon. one I haven't read. Out originally, I want to say in the 2008 time period as well. No, oh, 1996. Okay, so it came out in 1996, firstly, and then there were four books. I didn't, I didn't read this one, but in defense of myself, Megan Whale Turner did not release the next book in the series, even though it was supposed to come out in 2020. So I think we should be considered even. There are class entry of seven rounds series, of which starts with the Demon King by Cindy Williams of China. Again, a beloved fantasy series. Okay, I'm about to roast myself for not posting the like picture of the cover, but I did do it eventually, so I guess I escaped that roast. Again, this is like a classic fantasy series. I haven't gone to it yet, just like wasn't on my radar. I will defend I thought I was supposed to be roasting myself, but I'm kind of like defending myself here. I don't know what's going on. But I did try to cut down on book buying, so like this would maybe be a book that I would try via audio or renting an ebook from my library before I bought it because I did see the physical copy in the stores and it was really nice. But I really, really just want to try only buying physical books that I think are like books that meet that mean something to the soul. So like if it's like a favorite author, I'll just like buy the physical book. Um, but if it's like something that I'm not sure of, I think I would try and read it through another avenue first before purchasing. And this is just like personally because I'm running out of space because I have these two bookshelves, but I don't have space for another shelf. So I don't want to be buying books that I don't click with to just sit on the self shelf and gather dust and I like look at them and it doesn't spark any joy you know again another unrelated rant but like you're here for the fun you know next up on the list is Ace of Shades by Amanda Fuji something about this book has just been grabbing my attention lately and so I really would like to read it in 2020 this book still is grabbing my attention and I haven't read it yet I just feel like it's going to be a book that I really love and I do read Maybe I should try getting it like from my library and read the first one, but I feel like I'm gonna fall in love with the first one and then want to own the series. But like, is that a bad thing? I don't know. I'm Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. Because this is actually one where I felt like this series was speaking to me and I ignored my intuition. So I'm not gonna ignore her any longer. And here's my phone. Here's my wallflower card in my phone case. Um, if you stand twice. 
you have taste. And anyways, okay, so I'm gonna go to Libby. So I have an opening here. I need a new like tempered glass thing. <sighs> it always breaks on me because I'm clumsy. Search for Ace of Shades. Place hold. Okay, we are placing the hold on her. And hopefully by the time the hold comes through, I will read it. But I also have another library card. So let's see where it is in this library. I do want to read it kind of like physically. Okay, place hold. But there's only one person of Okay, so it could be ready for me in two weeks. So hopefully this will come through by the time that I'm home for Christmas. Maybe I can read it on the plane or something like this. But I do want to make this series a priority. And I feel like I'm going to love the first one and want to purchase this series. So you know what? We were productive in this roasting myself haul. We... We rented something from the library. I'm proud of myself. I have accomplished something, I guess. Continue. It's a good time. Next on my list is the Red Rising series by Pierce Brown, which again has made an appearance on a few of my TV cards that I haven't gotten to yet. We follow Darrow, who is a. I feel so bad because Maddie got this for me for my birthday. Oh my god, it has to have been 2019 now, right? But Maddie has a writing at Ether, but that's not the point. If she bought it for a reason, she should probably read it. Um, she said her dad really likes it, and her dad has, reads a lot too. Again, like, I just, I don't know, after, after reading Skyward, I was like, you know, that's, that's it in my, my sci-fi quota for the year, back to fantasy, but I should really read more sci-fi. Um, I do have this book still. I have not read it. I shall go hide in shame now. Because I haven't read it yet. And my friend got it for me for my birthday. Shame. Lots of shame. Anyways, moving on. I don't know, was anyone just like not in the mood for dystopian books this year? Because like, real life already sucked enough. Maybe that's just me. Okay. Who wants to be Crown of Feathers. I have not read this one, but I did get the second one. So I have Crown of Feathers and Heart of Flames in the Alcrate exclusive editions. And I wasn't going to get the Alcrate exclusive edition for the second one, even though I had the first one because that was when I was trying out Alcrate. And I've since stopped getting subscription boxes, not because I didn't like them, but just because I felt like I wasn't using the knickknacks, but I will get a subscription box every now and then. However, my friend got the Heart of Flames Alcrate one and it came damaged, so she was able to get another one, so she sent me the damaged one. And it is really beautiful. And like, look at that blue, and like the damage is like all of this here, which like if I paid for this, I would be annoyed, but I didn't pay for it. So. Anyways, this is another book that I own and I should be ashamed that I didn't read. But you know what? Here's the thing. By not reading the books on my shelf, I am creating a selection for myself whenever I feel the need that I need to read something that I don't want to read. I have options. I'm creating options. Next up is Caraval by Stephanie Garber, which is again another book that is well beloved on booktube that I have not gotten to yet. And in this one, I own this whole series. Have I read it yet? If you're if you're guessing with the theme of this video, it's a no. It's no. It's not even no, it's a no. I haven't read it yet. Like I have all of them here. I even have the Barnes Noble exclusive of this one. I know people that love this book. Oh, and Stephanie Garber just announced that there's going to be a companion novel to this like maybe I should read it in 2021. This does feel like a winter book so like to be considered for my january tbr <laughs> but i just kind of suck you know i kind of suck and i think if i'm going to create these goals for <laughs> the next year going forward i should write it down somewhere so that i stick to it because i didn't write these down anywhere completely forgot did not even attempt to read most of these books that are on this list <laughs> like i don't think they were on any TBRs besides like this one video, unless they were ones that I actually read. Is the name of the wind by Patrick Rothfuss, which is just the life story of a. Okay, so this is one that I actually have a changed opinion on, and it's like nothing really. I don't know like what 
has changed about me in that I actually don't feel the pull to read this book anymore. I think it's a great book, but like as of right now, I'm kind of over, like I just don't feel like I will be in the mood for like a meandering adult, like I'm sure this book is great, but I just like don't feel like I'm in the mood for a super, super long adult fantasy like that for a while. Like right now I'm really like more in the mood for like smut, very whimsical books and um, like fantasy romance. Like that's kind of what's catching my interest right now. So this is one that I'm like, you know what? I didn't get to this one in 2020 and like that's okay because I don't think I was ever in the mood for this book this year and if I tried to read it this year, it would put me in a huge reading slump. But if I am in the mood for this kind of like adult high fantasy type book, this will be one that I will reach towards but I just don't for my see myself being in the mood for this for like a long while and that's okay. Because, like I said, I feel like people like stress out about the fact that there's like books that they want to read and they haven't read yet. But like if you stopped having books that you wanted to read, then what would you look forward to? Nothing. Sadness. So TBRs are good. They keep you happy. They keep you motivated. Your TBR should be never ending so that you never run out of options. Just saying. Next up on my list is Renegades. I haven't read this one yet either and... I'm trying to think of a good excuse, I don't think I have one. I've had this book for a while and I love the Cinder series by Marissa Meyer. I really can't see any reason that I haven't read this one except for the fact that I didn't think about it all of 2020. Like I just, it just didn't cross my mind to read this book. Next up on my list is Grave of Murphy's by Robin LaFevers. This is set in 15th century Brittany, where Ismay is... So this is a book that Keely got me for Christmas, so again, it's me disappointing my friends. <laughs> um, I do think I want to read this one soon, especially because... So Keely got me that one. I also got this beautiful book for my birthday, and this is like the follow-up series of the Grave Mercy series, so... I don't know, I just feel like people have been giving me this book, so maybe it's like a sign that I should be reading them. Um, so yeah, so maybe like Grave Mercies is now back on my radar again, so I can finish up that series and move on to this beautiful series. And also the cover for Igniting Darkness, low-key in love with it. And like the black and the white. So I have this like black and white shelf going here. So like it would be, it would kind of annoy me, but if I put them like, I don't, I don't know, it would just like really cool. Okay, let's see what's next. Next up, I don't know why I haven't read Children of Blood and Bone yet. This is just like a book that has been very talked about on booktube and I got it at BookCon in 2018. Still haven't read it. So, in Children of Blood and Bone. Okay, I did read Children of Blood and Bone this year. Proud of myself. Proud of myself, jazz hands, woo! Okay, I did read this book. I did really think it was awesome. Um, there was in the Disney press conference release the other day, I read through that thread, and there was some more news about the Children of Blood and Bone series, and it's being developed by Lucasfilm, which does Star Wars. Another book that I bought forever ago and still haven't gotten to, and that is Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa, and this is a Kitsune book. Ah! Uh, <laughs> I have so many books that I didn't read! I haven't read this one yet either, and it just seems like something I would love. <laughs> and I haven't read it yet. I'm trying to figure out where it is on my bookshelf. It should be somewhere. I wouldn't have gotten rid of it. Wait, what the heck? Oh, there it is. It's right here. Oh my god, I thought I had unhauled it and I'd be sad because I do want to read Shadow of the Fox eventually. It's like in this pile. <laughs> I have red, not red, not red, not red, red, not red, not red. I'm doing great. Again, a book I think I'll like didn't cross my mind after I made this video. Did make it. Friends of Love with Borg. 
books at 29. Oh, and this was a series that actually got like extended. So I think it was supposed to be two books. Now it's three books. Is it going to be four books? I don't know. But I know the second book is like this cool teal color. And then the third book is purple. I don't know what color the fourth book is going to be though. So read out any by Mary E. Pierce. And this one is... Okay, I think I did try to put a hold on this one on audio. I don't know. I just kind of stopped with audiobooks. I think audiobooks are a new goal of mine in 2020. Um, and the reason I fell... No, not 2020. 2021. And the reason I fell out of them is because I didn't really have anywhere to listen to them. I used to listen to them on my way to work, but I just love listening to music, like, in the, my mornings and evenings. So I didn't really want to listen to books during this time, but I think I found a new time to listen to audiobooks, and that is when I walk my dog every day. And I do try to take him on pretty long walks because he has a so I have been taking him mostly for walks on the beach and stuff like that and listening to my audiobooks while I do that and I really enjoy it. Right now I'm listening to The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill and it's a great audiobook. I'm about a third of the way through after two walks. So I do think with a mixture of working from home and going um, into work, I'm kind of like half in, half out at this point. I do have lots of time to walk him on the beach and hopefully once the sun stays out longer, I will have time to walk my dog even when I go into work because I will come home and there will still be light. But as of right now, it's really dark when I get home. Anyways, so um, yeah, that's probably one of my goals for 2021. And I'm going to probably do like some sort of like goal setting spread in my 2021 reading journal because I need to keep track of these things that I say that I want to do and then I forget about them. I need to write them down so I don't forget. Anyways, yeah, because of Deception, this is a long standing series and it does have a like spin-off series. So Dance of Thieves, which beautiful cover. So if I like these books, I would potentially, this would, I would potentially like, you know, buy that series. I do think this could be like a book series that I would read on ebook from my library. I do want to start taking advantage of that as well. I did get a Kindle Unlimited membership. I did have a December TBR where I talked about some Kindle Unlimited books I wanted to read. So I do think in addition to keeping track of my Kindle Unlimited, I will take advantage of my libraries um, and start renting more ebooks from there. I did read a f some books from my library on ebook this year, but I do really like having a Kindle. I like having a mixture of Kindle books and physical books I'm reading because I can read my Kindle in bed. And that's a big game changer for me because I love reading in bed with the lights off. I just feel like I can get a lot more reading done because I just love to sit in bed and like do whatever before I fall asleep, so. I'll talk about my face in <laughs> Wayne's bald. Like, what is going on with her? I don't know. Well, I haven't read yet, and that is Daughter of Smoke Bone by Lady Taylor. I absolutely adore Strange Dreamer. Why haven't I read this yet? I don't know. <laughs> but this? I still, I still don't know. Again, I don't know why I haven't read this one. It didn't call to me this year. I will read it when it calls to me, but it's not calling to me right now. So if I were to remake this video, I probably wouldn't put that on the list. But like, that's not to say it won't call to me at any point, but it's not calling. It just depends on my mood sometimes, you know? <laughs> this next one. <laughs> Reader books. I actually need to get to these. And last but certainly not least, we have The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson, which is the first book in the Miss Bourne trilogy. I've been reading to read this book forever, and I actually did start it in the last few days of 2019, but I'm going to finish it. List because I did not finish it. Miss Bourne is. I never picked it back up. I never picked it back up. I don't know what it is, but I started this book when I was home for the holidays in 2019, and I just kind of like went through like a gigantic reading slump at that point, and I just didn't feel like reading the whole time that I was home. So I didn't, and I this is one of the books that I kind of just put to the side, and I know that I will love it when I read it. I knew that from reading the beginning of it, but it just has not. Like again, like I haven't been really in the adult fantasy mood lately, unless it's adult fantasy romance, which is different than regular like adult high fantasy. When I am in that mood again, I will go for that book, but I have not been in the mood for that all year. And I don't know why. That's just life sometimes, but I don't think you should force yourself to read things that you don't think you will enjoy in the moment, because what's the point of reading it if you are not going to enjoy it. Like, I'd rather read things when I'm in the mood for them and I will enjoy them. So yes, okay. So the story is more of like a defending me not reading than a roasting myself. I did set these goals and I didn't meet them. Um, but, you know, the message at the end of the day is like, it's okay. I don't really care. I'm not mad about this. If anything, this has kind of like reminded me of some things that I wanted to read and I completely forgot about. And then I will have on my radar for 2021. 
And yeah, it's kind of reminded me that I should like do a better job of writing down these things that are goals so that if I write them down, I will stick to them. If I put them in a video and upload them and never think about it again, I won't think about it again. But writing things down is really like the key for me to meet goals. This has also been a goal setting talk somehow. But yeah. Um, so yeah, I hope you found this like enjoyable. I think it was kind of just like fun to roast myself, but also like at the end of the day, like I'm not mad at myself. I'm not upset that I didn't read these books. I just think it's kind of funny that like I was like, yeah, I'm gonna read these books in 2020, but I only read 50, what am I up to right now? 55 books. I'll get like a few more books before the end of the year. Like 20 books would have been like a chunk, like almost half. And I really like to read like newer books, newer releases that are catching my interest at the time. And I don't focus on much on backlist titles. So I'm not surprised that I didn't meet this goal. And I think for next year, if I do this video again, I will just pick 10 instead of 21 because 21 is a lot. So anyways, let me know what you have thought about this down below. If you feel like roasting me, just like go ahead, but like be nice. But like, you can roast me like a little bit, but like be nice about it. Yeah. Don't hurt my feelings too much. Um, and that's it. If you enjoyed this, please leave a fire emoji down below, you know, for like the roasting. And, you know, I have lots of great end of year content planned as well as new videos for the start of 2021. I'm really excited about it. So you can look forward to that for me. And in the meantime, have some fun reading books. I'll catch you guys in the next one.